on Hawaiian punch Know you like all this gush I know you can't get enough Sip, sipping on Hawaiian punch, ayy Hey, my name is Adeline Warren and you're listening to Girl Talk I like to say that I'm the big sister of the internet. You can watch me fuck up all you want, but hey, maybe we can learn something from it. I hope you enjoy. Hello, how are you? I hope you're doing good. Um, I saw someone comment and they were like, can you do a whole episode just like how you used to do your girl talk vlogs where you just like answer people's questions? And I was like, damn, should we do a whole episode of wow, wow, wow? Wow, 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 thoughts. I could do any other song. I don't know why I always think of that one. We're beautiful like diamonds in the sky. What would Rihanna do? Episode, a whole episode of just talking about your guys' questions and anything that you guys want to know. Does my hair look crazy? I'm going to put it in pigtails. I think that would be cuter. I'm going to be so real right now. I took an edible right before I filmed this episode and it's definitely hitting me right now but i think that's when the best advice will come out no (laughs) so if you're staying up late hanging out with friends yelling at the game on tv it's time to start thinking about hydration monday with liquid iv i love liquid iv because it's one stick and one stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone It has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks, no artificial sweeteners, plus zero sugar in the sugar-free version. Liquid IV replaces sugar with a proprietary amino acid, Alulose blend. Alulose is a naturally occurring sweetener with the same sweet taste and texture that one can expect from table sugar. It has no artificial sweeteners and zero sugar. Three delicious sugar-free flavors like white peach, green grape, and lemon lime, and a proprietary zero-sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners, and it's available in bulk nationwide at Costco. It has eight vitamins and nutrients, and it's non-GMO free, and it's free from gluten, dairy, and soy. It's so easy for me to just put the liquid IV packets in my purse, and I'll just take it, or even just in my car, I'll take it before a workout, take it after a workout, and feel super hydrated. The weekends are forgetting wild have a game plan for monday with liquid iv grab your liquid iv hydration multiplier sugar free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code girl talk at checkout again that's 20 percent off your first order when you shop the superior hydration today using the code girl talk at liquidiv.com and use the code girl talk i love you liquid iv <laughs> go in it So to answer someone's question, will you ever do an episode where it's like the old girl talks and you're just answering questions? Yes, we're doing that right now. One person, and I kind of want to make this the title of today's episode, is someone asked advice on sleeping with other people after a long relationship. So I kind of wanted to call this episode um, casual sex. Let's just talk about casual sex sex for a second because nobody talks about it and like people always like slut shame about it and then there's people saying like do you boo like sleep with whoever you want and like body count and like people asking what your body count is and blah 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 first of all i would like to say if anybody asks you about your body count lie and say a number that you think that they want to hear okay because nobody in the whole world will ever know your body count You could sleep with someone right now and not tell anyone and no one would know. Literally, no one would know. You could say that you slept with Harry Styles, but if you signed an NDA and you didn't get any photos to prove it, no one's going to believe you. Like you literally, like no one can prove their body count and no one benefits off of knowing. So just lie. Like I've come to a point in my life where I'm like, (sighs) Like, I don't care. I don't care how many people you slept with. And you shouldn't care how many people that I've slept with. I mean, hey, if if we've been dating for like a year or two, I'm going to be kind of curious. I'm going to be like, hey, how many people have you slept with? I'm just curious. But like, I don't know. Like, I never say it out of judgment and I never say it out of um anything i think i just i just say it out of like wanting to get to know the person or just like curiosity or i don't know but i think for the most part 
when people ask you for your body count and if it's not someone that you're actually like dating dating they aren't asking because they're interested in you they are asking because they want to judge you like I don't think I've ever had someone ask me what my body count was and they had like actual good intentions behind that question I don't know so first of all Before you even get into your whole phase, just lie about your body count. You don't kill anyone by lying about your body count. It doesn't affect anyone. It doesn't matter. Joe and Josh are never going to meet each other and be like, oh, you slept with Catherine? She told me that her body count was 12. What? She told me it was two. Who cares? Maybe she slept with 10 people at once. Like, it literally, like, it doesn't matter. So I would just like to say... I used to be very insecure about my body count at at the beginning because I thought that it was very low because I basically was in a five year long relationship. That was my first person that I've ever slept with. And I got out of that relationship in my early 20s and already all of my friends have slept with like maybe a couple. And I was kind of insecure about it. And I was like, I don't know, like, all my friends have slept with a couple people like what if I'm bad at having sex because I've only had sex with one person and obviously I feel like after a breakup there's very there's various types of routes that you can take (laughs) you can take the celibate route which I swear to you I did I did for nine months I did not have sex for nine months. I could have had a baby during that time. Um, But I think I just wasn't really interested. I would date people and I honestly went on some really good dates, but not enough to the point where I was like, "Eh, I like you. I want to sleep with you. And then it came to a point where it was nine months and I was like, girl, I haven't gotten laid in a really long time. So I met this guy on Hinge. We went on a couple dates. I felt in myself. I felt in my body. I felt like the timing was right. I felt safe with this person. So that was my second body. Yeah, girl. I have more than two bodies. Fucking believe it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my second person, I, I was like, you know what? It's so cool. Like sex doesn't have to be this crazy intimate thing my mom better not be listening to this episode it's t my girl talk mom get off of my podcast (laughs) don't listen or i'll expose your body count my mom told me (laughs) that's so funny um but yeah i don't know i after my second one i was like damn sex doesn't have to be this like crazy intimate thing it doesn't have to be with your boyfriend it could just be for fun and yeah it can be for fun but I also feel like when I was in that mindset I got myself into a lot of dangerous situations and I've been in various different situations where maybe my health was at risk because I wasn't talking to the best citizens (laughs) I was definitely talking to people that were very sketchy and I definitely put my my own safety at risk because I was silly and crazy and I thought that talking to these bad people made me really cool um I've put myself in situations where I didn't ask the person I wasn't like hey are we using a condom because I thought that I was being crazy and I was like, I don't want to be the crazy person that's like ruins the moment and it's like, are we using a condom and blah, blah, blah. So there were a couple like, okay, I think there was one. There was one or two times where I didn't bring up the condom question and I felt so weird and uncomfortable after and I was like fuck like now I have to get tested because you know chlamydia for men can sometimes just be uncomfortable but chlamydia for women if you have chlamydia long enough you won't be able to get pregnant like shit's fucking serious 
Um, so there were times where I put my safety at risk, my health at risk. And there was just times where I was just talking to people that were just like shitty people. But I think that I needed to go through those things to be the person that I am today and relearn my sex life because I think when I first got out of that relationship, I felt like maybe I wasn't in control of my sex life and I gave it all to this one person and it was for so long and, you know, we wouldn't have it that often. So I I felt like I wasn't in control of it. And then once I finally got a taste of like sex that wasn't very emotional and more casual, I feel like I kind of gained that power back. Like this is me. I'm choosing to do this. I'm choosing and I'm feeling empowered to do this. And there were many times where I did have a hookup and I felt super empowered after. And it was like a fun night in in Greece and Mykonos and the person was just dancing right and the the vibes were great and it was fun and it was drunk and it was sloppy and it was fun and I felt empowered after and I was like this is so fun this is what single this is all about this is what singles being all about like this is being single and I'm living my best single life and I think after you know the good times where I feel very empowered and then after the many bad times where I look back and I'm like that was not consensual that I didn't like that that didn't make me feel good that I probably put myself in an unsafe situation that I was definitely being stupid with that I think after so many times where I realized that sex is really just a form of energy transfer and when I really realized this was this one time I hooked up with this guy <laughs> and um I just I remember I was on a girl's trip and me and my girls went to Greece and we were so excited and the vibes were just right with this one person and it was so much fun one night and then the next night I just remember the vibes were a little bit off and after we had sex I just remember feeling so negative and feeling so down and it's almost like the next day I had a hangover to the point where I was like I guys I feel so weird I need to take a run and I literally ran around the fucking island I don't remember which island we were on (laughs) and I was like I need to get this man's energy out of my system because we had sex last night and I like feel weird and has that have ever happened to you where like you you feel you have sex with someone and then it's like their energy is being transferred onto you and it can mean like you have sex with someone that has anxiety you have sex with someone that's depressed you have sex with someone that has negative energy sex is the craziest energy transfer ever like imagine you're driving your car and then someone honks the horn at you the energy is that horn and it's like being transferred over to you where it's that negative emotion like move the fuck out of the way you're like fuck you bitch go around you know what i mean and and even just like the comments on the internet like people being like oh you have a big nose that's their negative energy being transferred onto you it's negative energy even just like when someone laughs and then they touch your leg and it's like ha 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 you're so funny i don't know that's like positive energy a hug is positive energy sex is the most intimate crazy energy transfer and I think I've just realized that over the past couple of years and in realizing this I think I've just become a lot pickier in the people that I decide to have sex with and by doing this I have been feeling empowered almost a hundred percent of the time and by that I mean I won't have sex with someone that I feel like has negative energy 
that I feel like doesn't have good intentions, that I feel like just is a bad person. Because to me, it's not worth it. I literally feel like I have a sex hangover the next day to the point where I, it's just not worth it for me. I don't know. And I, I feel like I used to be so insecure about my, my body count that I would be like, oh, like, it doesn't matter, like, blah, 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 blah. But it does fucking matter. And nobody knows my body count except for me. I haven't told anyone it. And yeah, (laughs) I don't even think that it matters. I think all that matters is that, you know, after a really long relationship and you want to maybe like start something like hoeing out and sleeping around with people, you know, it's fun. And I do have to admit, it's really empowering. But I also do have to admit that I want to say 75% of the time, it's not empowering. And you come out of it and you're like, that person didn't ask me if I like that. And that person didn't have my best interest at heart. And that person honestly didn't even give a fuck about me finishing. All they cared about was them finishing. And how sad is that? I don't know. I feel like it's really embarrassing if you have sex with someone and you don't make them come. Like, that's, I don't know. It's honestly really embarrassing the amount of guys that don't realize that most women don't come through vaginal penetration. It's through the clit. And there's been so many times where, like, I, like, you have to ask someone I mean, I feel like you always have to, like, vocalize what you like, but you have to ask people to, like, go down on you. Like, I don't know. I feel like with hookups, too, I feel like it's it's like you're both there for a fun reason, and the reason is to just have a good time. And if you go into a good time and only – one person is able to finish the race like girl (laughs) I don't know it's so embarrassing and I feel like (laughs) like when I started sleeping with girls it just made me (laughs) realize (laughs) how embarrassing men are (laughs) I'm sorry my edible definitely hit but I think I just started realizing like how embarrassing men are in bed like they're really 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 bad like I want to say 90 to 100 percent of the time I've finished with girls and I can't say the same with boys and I used to think like oh my god my sex life is so great like you know I'm able to be single and explore with different people and like feel empowered and blah 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 um but after all these hookups i'm like damn like like imagine if you didn't vocalize what you what you like because i feel like i'm a very vocal person and i'll tell you what i like um i just imagine all the people that aren't vocal about what they like and then they don't come i'm like what is the point what is the point there's i literally I'm like, it baffles me. And it, it, like, I almost, like, don't, I just, I talk to some people about it, like, some of my girlfriends, and they're like, yeah, I haven't come in a couple years. Years? I haven't had sex in a couple, like, what? I don't know. I feel like in any relationship i feel like sex is an important part like sex is honestly i feel like sex is a translation of your relationship and how it's going like if if someone is getting you flowers and they're making you feel really good like you want to have sex with them if someone is being lazy and they're not motivating you and they're kind of like a stick in the mud you don't want to have sex with them like your sex life translates over to 
how you feel about that person overall in the relationship. And if you're not vocalizing like how to have a good time and like finishing and 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 finishing in sex, I just don't understand how that relationship can be healthy. And even just like my friends or even girls being like, oh, well, you never made me come as like an insult to a guy when they break up. I'm like, girl, that's embarrassing for you. Like, why? I don't know. I feel like it's it's like both sides of the party that's at fault here. Like, obviously, guys need to be more into sex ed and like they need to know how a woman's body works because they just watch porn and they know how to get themselves off and not girls. And I feel like girls need to be better at communicating what we like because every person is different. Every guy likes their whatever different and every girl likes their whatever different. And some girls like XYZ and some girls don't like XYZ. So I don't know. For me personally and from almost every single person that I've hooked up with, they say that being confident about what you like in bed and being vocal about what you like in bed is a turn on so that's definitely some advice that i would give you if you are getting into your hoe era another piece of advice that i would give i think is don't go down on someone if they're not going down on you first <laughs> especially as being girls um and if you're not coming, then I don't know, maybe try woman. I don't know. <laughs> you probably have better luck there. <laughs> I don't know. So if you're staying up late, hanging out with friends, yelling at the game on TV, it's time to start thinking about Hydration Monday with Liquid IV. I love Liquid IV because it's one stick and one stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. It has three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks, no artificial sweeteners, plus zero sugar in the sugar-free version. Liquid IV replaces sugar with a proprietary amino acid Alulos blend. Alulos is a naturally occurring sweetener with the same sweet taste and texture that one can expect from table sugar. It has no artificial sweeteners and zero sugar. Three delicious sugar-free flavors like white peach, green grape, and lemon lime, and a proprietary zero sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners, and it's available in bulk nationwide at Costco. It has eight vitamins and nutrients, and it's non-GMO free, and it's free from gluten, dairy, and soy. It's so easy for me to just put the liquid IV packets in my purse, and I'll just take it, or even just in my car, I'll take it before a workout, take it after a workout, and feel super hydrated. The weekends are forgetting wild have a game plan for monday with liquid iv grab your liquid iv hydration multiplier sugar free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code girl talk at checkout again that's 20 percent off your first order when you shop the superior hydration today using the code girl talk at liquidiv.com and use the code girl talk i love you liquid iv <laughs> go in it it mostly, I think it, it's the, 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 what is it called? The cum gender gap? <laughs> I don't know what it's called. The fact that men come like 90% of the time and women come, I don't know what percent, like less than 40. It really, really, really irritates me because I don't understand why we don't teach this in sex ed in high school. Like, let's be honest here having sex is just as normal as washing your clothes in the fucking laundry machine everybody has sex that's how you're alive today your parents had sex it's normal i don't understand why we don't teach this in health class like you know they taught us how to put a condom on but that's like really about it and like to this day i don't think i've ever put a condom on someone ever in my whole life like they just did it themselves like, I don't understand why people don't talk about, you know, how to make a woman orgasm, how to give consent, how to tell your partner what you like, like, like shit like this. Like, I feel like all this is so important in sex and on the media and in porn and in whatever. I just feel like all that's being promoted is just like rough and 
and bump, 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 bump. Like, like, don't get me wrong, that feels good, but n- not the whole time and not all the time. I feel like for us as women, we're so like mentally stimulated and it almost feels better to just like go slow and like go with the flow of things and like not be so rough all the time. I don't know. We're getting really off topic here. She literally asked <laughs> how to sleep with other people after a long relationship. And a short answer is just be safe. Your body will let you know when it's ready. You'll just know. Um, don't put yourself in scary situations just because you want to be cool. Because at the end of the day, you sleeping with someone dangerous benefits no one. <laughs> That's crazy that I'm putting this online. But just always make sure that you're safe. Don't put yourself in any uncomfortable situations. And just have a good time. And vocalize what you like. Um, because I promise you it will be a turn on every single person that I've ever vocalized what I like whether it's like I like this or make sure to rub this or make sure to pinch this whatever it is whatever feels good for you make sure to vocalize it tell them to do it um, and have a good time and make sure to orgasm because the orgasm gap is awful the gals on the girl talk podcast vocalize what they like We sleep with cool people who are interested in making us come and we orgasm. Hell yeah, ladies. Okay, (laughs) we're moving on to the next question. Someone says, how can you heal from you cheating on your partner? Girl, I'm not trying to judge here, but this is a gnarly question for me to take in. Um... Well, you know, I feel like cheating for different people means different things. I think that for some people, cheating could be DMing someone or cheating could be going to the strip club or cheating could be um, kissing someone or cheating could be going on a date with someone or cheating could be talking to someone of the opposite sex someone it it could also be just sleeping with someone else um so it's it's hard to say because you didn't say what kind but everybody has their own version of what cheating is and i feel like when you're in a relationship with someone you should talk about shit like that you should be like hey like let's talk about what you're comfortable in this relationship with like you know me and my friends we like to go out we go to the bars and like sometimes I talk to people and I like get a free drink but nothing comes out of it and it's just us having fun and for some people they'd be totally okay with it and for some people that's considered cheating so where are you on that spectrum you know what I mean so how can you heal from you cheating on your partner um I think that you first of all need to tell your partner because if you're trying to heal from it, I think that you deserve closure and you deserve to tell them and feel their reaction. And I think moving forward, you have to ask yourself in situations would I like this if my partner did this to me? And if the answer is no, then just don't do it. You know, I feel like there's a saying that says, um, do upon others what you would want done upon you. I don't know if that's the right saying, but I think just moving forward, you know, I can't imagine cheating probably doesn't feel good at all. It's probably a really slimy, icky feeling. And after you've done it, you're like, what the fuck did I just do? Um, but I think the best way to heal from it is by coming clean, telling your partner, um, communicating, hopefully moving on from it. If not, then maybe just learning from it because there's a lot of people out there that would be down to being in an open relationship. And if you're into that, then I think you should do that. And 
I honestly, like, I, I don't want to make you feel bad, but I feel like cheating comes from a place of insecurity. And that's something that you need to heal within yourself. A lot of the times, cheaters, they're people who just don't feel confident within themselves. And when they get that external validation from someone else, when they get that external validation from anyone else, um, they take it because they're insecure and they don't feel like they deserve love and attention and a healthy relationship. And then when an opportunity is presented of itself, they can't help themselves and they don't have that willpower and they don't have that confidence to be like, I know I'm the shit. A lot of people know that I'm the shit. Of course you want to have sex with me. I'd want to have sex with me too. But I'm not going to cheat on my partner who loves me very much, who's really good at making me orgasm, who I could imagine my whole life with, who I've communicated to that I don't like this. So I'm not going to do it. I just... I don't know. I feel like cheaters are insecure and cheaters, a lot, of, a lot of the times they just need to focus on themselves because then go to therapy. If anything, I think you need to go to therapy. <laughs> Love you, girl, though, but please go to therapy. <laughs> um, next question, it says, <laughs> someone said would you ever start an only fans i know a lot of guys who would be interested i think for my life journey right now i'm not looking for an only fans um i don't think it's my one true calling but i support anyone that does and is empowered and feels empowered doing that job and feels empowered doing whatever um i think it's really awesome and girls get your shmoney but yeah i can't see myself doing it now but hey you never know <laughs> i don't know i really can't i don't know <laughs> i feel like over the past couple of years i've really learned the that privacy is such a privilege um so i think something as intimate as that for me i wouldn't do it but I think for other people, and if it makes them feel really empowered and they make a lash money, then fucking do it, girl. Someone said, how to date after being ghosted twice. Aww. Girl, I'm so sorry. I know. Dude, I think, honestly, the worst feeling in the whole entire world is being ghosted. Am I right? Being ghosted is the worst feeling in the world. Like, you're like, Wow. I'm such a piece of shit that I don't even deserve a response. I don't even deserve any closure. Okay, I guess. Like, uh, whatever. I guess I was nothing to you. But I think ghosting is just like the most cowardly way to exit a relationship. You can't even communicate what your turn-ons or turn-offs were or like why you don't think it will work out. Like, ghosting is just very cowardly. But... I also feel like if you've never been on a date with someone, you're allowed to ghost them. But, like, bitch, if you've been on a date with someone, like, at least give them, like, the courtesy to, you know, say, hey, honestly, I don't think that this is working out. You know? Because it's always the fucking Sagittarius. It's the Sagittarius that they leave things open-ended so that they could come back later. But you don't want people like that in your life. You want people that want to, that like respect you and like they think that you're the shit. And like if the opportunity presents themselves, they want to wipe you up. Like you don't want someone that's just like, oh, Sarah always comes back to me. And whenever I ghost her, she always texts me back. So I'm just going to get my attention for now for Sarah. Don't go for a man that just wants attention. A lot of the times men are just bored and they just want attention and they just want to feel like they're worthy of a response or that they can pull so many girls or whatever it is. But that doesn't benefit you. And stop letting these these fuck boys like ruin your life. Trust me, they've ruined mine. <laughs> For many months, I've been torn upside down 
this fucking fuck boy that literally i don't even know i'm looking back and i'm like he was such a loser i can't believe that i was so obsessed with him but i think it's because i was just very insecure at the time i was going for someone that was on the same low vibrational energy that i was on and growing up i always felt wanting to be loved and sometimes i didn't get that so when i see a fuck boy that's doing the exact same thing to me wanting to be loved and not reciprocating the same thing it reminds me of my childhood and I get really excited over it but we've been to therapy and now we're over it and now I know that I'm deserving of love and a healthy relationship <laughs> that was a crazy answer but I think dealing with ghosting one thing that I would say is just keep putting yourself out there it's almost like rejection it's like the more times you get rejected, the less that it affects you. The more times you get ghosted, the less it affects you. So just keep putting yourself out there. You got this, girl. Everybody gets ghosted. Everybody. I'm sure Emily Ratajkowski's gotten ghosted, okay? I'm pretty sure Rihanna's gotten ghosted. Everybody's gotten ghosted, especially if you're beautiful. That's you. <laughs> so don't sweat it. It happens to everybody. Just keep putting yourself out there and... They won't affect you as much. Next question says, guys who ghost and then come back. This is a lot of ghosting questions. Girl, who's hurting you? Who is hurting you? Let me show up. Let me show up and punch some bitches out. Just kidding. I won't punch anyone. But who is ghosting you guys? That's what I want to know because y'all are so beautiful. But guys who ghost and then come back again. They are pieces of shit. Men who ghost, who don't even give you the time of day to be like, hey, honestly, like, I'm really busy in my life right now. I'm not looking for anything serious. Like, I honestly, I can't focus on texting you back and blah, blah, whatever. Guys like that, and then they come back, are the insecure men that just want to be validated. And when they text you and they're like, hey, or they put very little effort, what's up? what's going on you responding will make them feel valid like oh okay sarah still wants me and she always texts me back so sarah's my girl that i like to just like use for validation and attention don't be that girl if someone ghosted you and they come back to you i think you know, you get one chance and then the second time it's like, girl, you're going in the graveyard. Have you seen that on TikTok? Girls will literally delete the name and then put the grave emoji because you're in the graveyard because you ghosted and you don't deserve my attention because being in my life is a privilege. And if you take advantage of my niceness and you take advantage of my love and me, you get one chance and then that's it. And then you're in the graveyard. Speaking to me is a privilege. Being in my inner circle is a privilege. And that is a privilege that you just don't have. But fuck the guys who ghost and then come back. Fuck them. But don't fuck them. Like, penetrate it. Fuck them like get rid of them. As Julia Fox said. I don't know what she said. <laughs> I feel like since we've been talking about sex so much, especially with casual sex so much in this episode, I should bring this up. Someone said... Anything about STIs? Recently, I got diagnosed with an incurable one and we need more awareness. Well, <sighs> ladies, just because you're on birth control doesn't mean that it's protected you of everything. You know, girl, if you're going to be having casual sex, even if you're in a relationship, I really think that you should ask someone to get tested before you have unprotected sex because I can tell you that it's a lot of the relationship guys that they don't get tested. They're the type of guys to be like, oh, yeah, I'm clean. My last girl got tested and she's clean, so I must be clean. Like, bitch, it doesn't work like that. Like, you could fully have chlamydia and be asymptomatic and then the other person, asymptomatic, and you did, I don't, like, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't fucking work like that. You have to get tested. So I think with 
having casual sex and that being the topic of today's episode bitch use condoms and i know that guys will say it doesn't feel the same yeah i know it doesn't feel the same but neither does chlamydia the fuck i would rather have something that 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 is a little rubber in between us than to have to go to the doctor and get a needle in my ass because i got gonorrhea like the fuck i'm so lucky because i'm such a crazy like i don't fuck with stds and i get really scared and every single time that i've had sex with someone unprotected i've regretted it every single time but if i didn't ask them to get tested before every single time that i've ever hooked up with someone we use protection and if the the one or two times that we didn't i've regretted it and i got tested right after and thank god i was clean but you never know and i don't know it's obviously a really awkward thing to say and what i would do is if you're in a relationship or you're going on a date with someone i would definitely ask them outside of the bedroom and be like hey um i know we've been using condoms but have you gotten tested recently like would you be open to getting tested with me um and then maybe we can start doing unprotected because i'm taking birth control or whatever it is um but girl it's it's cool to use condoms everybody uses condoms and it's the guys that ask you to not use a condom that are the dirtiest that don't get tested and that possibly will spread you with something it's the guys that are proactively putting on the condoms that the ones that you don't even have to ask they just know that to put it on those are the ones that are good but also make sure to get them tested i don't know where i was going with that but it's the ones that ask to do it without those are the dirty ones don't do that and it's also a lot of the relationship ones because they're like oh I thought i'm a relationship guy like blah, 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 blah. bitch you've never gotten tested and you probably have four stis like holy fuck you should get tested i don't understand why people don't get tested more girl you're supposed to get tested every six months if you're sex sexually active i think more than that and i know i know for a damn fact all y'all not getting tested so make sure you get tested <laughs> next question someone said what do you think about people in a three-way relationship i think whatever makes you fucking happy do you know that humans are not even supposed to be monogamous we weren't raised like that we are not monogamous creatures we never were bred like that like we're we're just like animals and we just like fuck whatever right did you know that the penis you know the little mushroom at the top it's supposed to pull all of the old cum out because it's survival of the fittest so it's supposed to pull the old cum out and then shoot the new ones in so that their sperm is more fit and more able to survive in your uterus yeah we're not supposed to be monogamous <laughs> so i don't know i've been in open relationships before and i think i've realized what i like and i don't judge like i feel like people are so judgmental with like polyamorous and open and uh trouble relationships but it's like how does someone's sex life and like the genitals that they prefer and the amount of genitals that they prefer affect you it literally does not affect you in any way shape or form that's why i'm so like bamboozled by the fact that people are so obsessed with like people being gay like what makes me wanting to sleep with someone that has the same genitals as me like so crazy to you how does it affect you it doesn't affect you in any way shape or form it's just the people that i sleep with at night maybe during the day i don't know but it's my sex life and i'll deal with it and you literally never hear about it i don't know it's like crazy to me that people are so still so crazy about people being gay and in polyamorous relationships and open relationships i don't know i just feel like i'm also a very open person and 
things that I like, maybe other people don't really like. Um, but I think if you're, if someone's in a three-way relationship or someone's in a polyamorous relationship or someone's in an open relationship, that doesn't mean that they don't respect themselves. Because I used to think that. I used to be like, oh, if you're in a three relationship or if you're in a four-way relationship or a polyamorous relationship, open relationship, whatever it is, I always was like, oh, they just don't have respect for themselves. You know, I used to be like, oh, they they don't feel like they're worthy of like one partner. So like that's why, you know, they're so weird. Like they're, they don't respect themselves. But like after being in one, I just don't think that's the case. I just think that whatever floats your boat just floats your boat. Like sometimes what you like, maybe someone else might not like, like maybe you're straight you don't want to be licking a pussy, do you? No. So how can you imagine a three-way relationship? Or how can you judge a polyamorous relationship if that's just you? You're straight and you like dick and you just don't like, you know? <laughs> I'm getting way too comfortable on this episode. Let's do one more question. <laughs> but I think three-way relationships, if it makes you happy then at the end of the day, it doesn't affect me, doesn't affect you, doesn't affect anyone. Just do whatever makes you happy. And then, oh, I like this one to end the podcast. Someone said, can you talk about being in a healthy relationship after a toxic one? I really like this episode to end it because I feel like I've been through so many phases of my life and I feel like, like every, every time I'm in the present, I'm like, I'm so fucking smart. I'm the smartest person alive, actually. Like, I've learned so much. Like, I'm, I'm actually so smart. Like, everyone should be doing it like me. I feel so bad for anyone that's not me. <laughs> and then I grow up five years from now, and I was like, actually, bitch, you were really stupid. But that was a phase you were going through, and like, now you're me now, and now you're actually really smart. That's how I feel about life. Um, so I feel like I've definitely been in some toxic relationships in the past i've dated people who were doing illegal activities i've dated athletes i've dated i don't know i feel like i've dated boys i've dated girls like i've tried a lot of things and uh throughout all of those tryings i've been in toxic relationships and were they fun hell yeah i remember like fighting in the car and like it being so steamy and so hot and like having the best sex ever and going out to dinner and like fighting at dinner and like having sex in the bathroom I don't know it's like so fun to be in a toxic relationship isn't it we all love toxic relationships I think that it's just it's something that's it's just super high highs and super low lows it's so, 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 so much fun. And I used to be like, oh, I love a good toxic relationship. But I feel like after being in a good, healthy relationship after that whole era of mine, I've just realized how much better my life is. When I'm in a healthy relationship, I don't have to worry about my partner cheating on me. I don't have to worry about my partner getting mad at me. I don't have to worry about my partner blowing up on me, of them having a bad day, of them maybe even ghosting me. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about anything. And I can just focus on myself, like how I've just been focusing on learning French and moving to Paris and making videos and doing this podcast and whatever it is. I feel like I'm so focused on my life and I feel so at peace with my life when I'm in a healthy relationship. Whereas when I'm in a toxic relationship, it's all that you can think about. And that's what makes it so fun. It's like all that you can think about and it's like the hot, like it's so steamy and it, the sex is so good and blah, 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 blah. But my life was in shambles, bitch. Like, I couldn't focus on shit for my life. And then once I started dating someone or people that were healthy, I don't know, you just realize how much better your life is. And you realize that your significant other isn't supposed to be a headache. 
your significant other isn't supposed to make you feel like shit or make you feel down or make you feel whatever. Your significant other is supposed to benefit your life and they're supposed to bring opportunities to your life and they're supposed to um, bring good things to you and they're supposed to give you gifts and they're supposed to make you happy and they're supposed to make you smile and when you see them, you you feel happy and being around them is just like, it's always good and like maybe it's not always the high highs but it's also not the low lows. Maybe it's just like happy and maybe it's just consistent and maybe it's just being in a good place and they're always there for you and you just feel taken care of. I think I used to be so obsessed with the high highs and the low lows of the toxic relationships. But after being in a healthy relationship, you're like, they're just, they're very different. But I think just being in a healthy relationship just overall makes me really happy. And it overall makes me feel very positive. And I overall feel like I'm living a better life. And before when I was in that toxic relationship and I would always be fighting with that person and they were taking up like 90% of my brain capacity. Like they were, we were always fighting. I was always on edge. I never knew what was going to piss them off next. And then we would fight and the lows were really low and they would ghost me and they would treat me like shit. And they would, you know, be awful. But then you remember the really high highs of like how amazing you guys are together and like the trauma bonding and how you guys are the same because you both grew up with like a alcoholic parent or whatever it is and you bonded over that, whatever it is. It's really, really, really fun for a month. And then after that, it's just a headache. And honestly, a lot of the times it doesn't even last over a month. So I don't know. Those are my two cents on toxic relationships versus healthy relationships. Um, and I feel like I've come a long way since then. I have I was obsessed with the toxic relationships and I know that they're really fun. But girl, you deserve to be loved. You deserve to be respected. You deserve to come home to flowers once in a while. You deserve someone that will plan the dates. You deserve someone that is consistent. You deserve someone that will text you back. You deserve someone that will call you. You deserve someone that will answer your calls whenever you need. You deserve someone that is consistent, someone that is kind, and someone that just benefits your life and doesn't take up 90% of your brain capacity because you're wondering if you're going to piss them off or they're, I don't know, whatever. (laughs) You feel like you're going to break up constantly. You deserve consistency. You deserve to be feeling the feeling of taken care of. Am I even speaking English right now? I need to take five more milligrams and go to sleep. Um, but <laughs> you just you deserve everything in the whole world. Anything that your childhood self really wanted, you deserve it. And yeah, I wish that I knew that a couple years ago because I had to go through a lot of bad frogs to find a good one. Um, but I feel like I'm at a point in my life now where my vibrations and my energy are able to match with people that are on the same wavelength as me um, because I do feel like like attracts like. And when I was in that very negative state and I love the toxic relationships, I would attract other toxic people. Like attracts like. I'm in a place right now where I don't care about toxic relationships and someone that I once was attracted to back then, back then, I don't think I would be attracted to now and vice versa. Yeah. Just lift your vibrations. I know that you know that you deserve it. You just have to stop dealing with bullshit and you'll start, you'll start attracting the good ones. I promise. I know it seems really hard, but you will. But I love you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's girl talk episode. Let me know if you want more just talking about the, the questions because that one was kind of a fun episode, even though I talked about casual sex a lot. But I love you guys. I'm sorry if today's episode is very (laughs) R-rated, but we need one of these once in a while. I don't know. (laughs) But I love you guys. If you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. And if you're on Spotify or Apple podcast then make sure to give it a five-star rating because it helps me a lot um but yeah i love you guys i'm always here if you need to talk same place same time you guys know love you bye
Did you like that episode? I really hope that you did. Um, if you haven't already, then make sure to watch last week's episode or the week after. Just click on the links, whatever it is. Um, and I hope that you guys enjoyed. Also, be sure to subscribe because it helps me a lot. Um, but I love you and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye. Sipping.